Hello, welcome back to the shop and my channel. Um, this is one of the little tool videos I promised I was going to do. Uh, first note, I have a coffee cup next to my table saw. Danger Will Robinson, Danger Will Robinson. Well, I have Izzy Swan's a table saw extension, which is also a coffee cups holder table. Keeps it away from the uh, table saw surface. Yeah, I, I use it for that occasionally. See, see what I did there? So today I want to talk about some tools that were gifts. I've mentioned these in the past, but I want to start with the two tools my wife bought me consecutive Christmases. The first one, this is the first tool she ever bought me. I've always had a warm spot in my heart and in my hand for the leather, stacked leather handle S-Twing tools. You know, this is obviously an S-Twing hammer. Uh, my dad had one. I think my grandfather had one. But uh, this is mine. It has much use on it. Um, and not being a professional carpenter, I don't need the fancy rebounding titanium hammer that costs $300. So she got me this. Remember, we were married. We didn't have a lot of money. She got me this wonderful stacked hammer. It's, it's got great patina on it. And I love it to death because it's what I've always wanted. But today's tool is a small... Very precise, very well-made block plane. 12 and a half degree block plane. I believe it's 12 and a half degrees. This is a Lee Nielsen. Um, this, 30 years ago, was $75. I think it's $150 now, $175. Which, back then, was a bit of money. Uh, it fits in your hand perfectly. The surface has not shown any wearing out, even though it's, it's silicon bronze. Uh, it's got an iron that is just amazing for holding an edge. Take a closer look. I, f I forget the number uh, that Lee Nielsen calls this uh, in his catalog. Um, it's a reproduction, I think, of a, an earlier plane that was no longer available. By the way, a little backstory. Back when I was, we were first married, I was building boats and I fancied myself a bit of a tool maker, so I became an acquaintance of Tom Lee Nielsen. And we met several, on several occasions, and he gave me some pointers. And, but then I got out of that and moved on to other things. Maybe I should have stayed that way. Anyway, so what do we have here? It comes apart very easily. There's a little pressure screw back here, thumb screw, and the cap comes right out. Everything about Tom's stuff is very precise, very well made. Um, the cap has been machined, and the edge has been machined. This is that incredible iron I was talking about. This iron holds an edge like you would not believe. Now, I've watched the process of them making these irons. Uh, they take the, st the st steel, and they shape it and grind the edge on it. Then it goes into uh, heat treat, uh, hardening, tempering, and then they cryo it. So this goes down to liquid nitrogen temperatures and then slowly back up to room temperature. Um, it has been said that that kind of treatment on metals uh, increases their longevity or reduces their, their ability to wear. I've seen motorcycle engines that have been cryo-treated and uh, show less wear over time. So that's what happens with, the, with his irons. They're heat-treated, uh, for hardness, and then they're cryo-treated, which is kind of cool. Upside down, see? The body of the plane, again, is silicon bronze. The screw to adjust is stainless. Very nice lead screw. Now this is comes off the back here like so. Eh, it takes forever. The actual threaded part, the screw itself, is mounted to the plane body. And you can see the milling marks. Precision milled here, precision milled here. The, the, the gap, the mouth of the plane is uh, precise. The plane iron will adjust back and forth slightly, slide it back, back and forth this way slightly. Of course, it adjusts in and out. The back of the plane iron has a uh, machined out slot to mount perfectly to the adjuster. 
mounts into the plane. Now I've got it back so it's about a 32nd of an inch back from the mouth and I can adjust it right down in very easily. Feel it with my fingers coming out the other side. And the cap, again, goes back on, screws down, and locks in place. And that's it. That's such a simple thing, but it's such a finely made piece of ma ma machinery. Oh yeah, this shaft here is stainless as well. And um, in the boat shop, you always have your favorite tools that you like to use with you. And in this case, the Lee Nielsen plane was always in my apron. Um, when building boats, you know the old saying, plumb square and uh, straight plumb and square? Well, boats are not straight, plumb or square. They have to be straight this way, when you build them anyway. Um, and frames have to be, you know, square to the, to the, to the keel. But it's round everywhere else. And the port side and the starboard side aren't the same. Although they look the same, they aren't. I'll explain that in a minute. So when you're building a boat and you're putting this part into this part of the boat, you cut it out, to, which is going to have some round side to it or some notches in it, whatever, and it fits in there. And it doesn't fit in there, even though you measured twice and cut once, you still got to fine tune it slightly. And this is a great plane for doing that kind of work. A perfect example of that is, I'll leave a link in the, uh, um, in the description to uh, a video series on YouTube by Samson Boat Works, I forget the full name, but Leo Samson is restoring a 112 foot gaff cutter tally ho, and it's documented on YouTube. It's up in Ports Towns in Washington. Uh, his later videos show the finicky details you have to go into to get the boat to, uh, to, f to, to, to every, the parts into the boat, to make them fit and match perfectly and have nice, the pretty joinery and all that. As far as the port side and right side, uh, port side and starboard side, we used to, building the small boats that were planked, we would take a thick piece of cedar, spile up, Google that, spile up the plank, cut that shape out to that spiling so that it was the shape that it needed to be to be let up into the boat. Then we'd resaw it down the middle and plane it to thickness. And you think, oh, well, they're going to go in because they're the same on either side. Well, no, this one will go in with a little bit of adjustment. This may go in with a lot of adjustment. So that's the nature of boat building. So, um, if you're ever in Warren, Maine, I highly recommend that you stop by Lee Nielsen's, uh, I, I hesitate to call it a factory, it's, 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 a, it's a shop. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, CNC and some milling machine, there's a lot of handwork in these. And um, you, I think you can still get a tour of part of the shops where they build the planes, not a full tour. Uh, also, when you walk into the showroom, you will die and wish you had millions of dollars to spend because the, the, the tools are there for you to try and they're absolutely stunning. Now, Warren, Maine, great place to visit anyway. So until next time, make great things out of wood and find some favorite tools and use them.